Hi everyone, welcome back to another video. So in this video, we're going to be going through a resonance example problem. So in the previous video, we covered a brief introduction to resonance, as you can see here. So if you haven't already watched that video, go back and watch it. I'll link it here. And then other, other than that, let's get started. So, so let's say we've got an AC supply, 100 volts, 50 hertz. Then we're going to do a resistor, an inductor, and a capacitor. We'll give the resistor four ohms, so we'll do a very small resistor. And this is mostly because I want to show you the impact of what resonance can have in terms of the amount of high voltages that could come from just 100 volts. Let's go over 500 millihenry inductor. And then what we're going to do is we're going to put a variable capacitor here. And I'll, I'll show you why in a minute. Okay, so for this problem, let's calculate the capacitance that's required to give series resonance. And then let's also calculate the voltages that would be generated across the inductor and the capacitor. And then let's also calculate the voltage across the inductor and capacitor. Okay, so whenever you're dealing with resonant problems, if you just think about it like this, right? So at resonance, XL is gonna be equal to XC, right? And that we can calculate resonant frequency using FR is equal to 1 over 2 pi, the square root of LC. So as long as you keep those things in mind, it should be fine. So for us to find out XC, we can just find out XL. So XL is going to be equal to 2 pi times uh, 50, which is the Hertz frequency, and then 0 0.5 for the millihenries here. So you've got 2 pi times 50 times 0 0.5. So that gives us 157 uh, 0 0.079, so 0.1 ohms. Which also means that Xc is equal to 157.1 ohms, right? Because at resonancy, then XL and XC are equal. So now we can find capacitance since XC is 1 over 2 pi FC. Right, so XC is equal to 1 over 2 pi FC. Which means that C is actually just going to be 1 over 2 pi FXC. Hopefully you've got that, yeah? So we can calculate C then, 1 over 2 pi times 50 times 157.1. And so that's 1, 2, 3, 4, so that's 20.3 microfarads. And there we go, we have our capacitance value. At resonancy, so we can put that up here 20.3 microfarads. All right, so the next step now is to calculate the voltages across these. So let's go, we need to get the current first. So I is going to be equal to V over R, which is equal to 100 uh, volts divided by 4 ohms, which is going to be 25 amps. So the thing about a resonancy is that VL is going to be equal to VC, right? So that means that VL is I times XL, which is 25 times 157.1. And so here you should be able to see now that this voltage drop across this inductor is going to be huge. 157, you can like 4,000, right? Yeah. So you got 3,927.5 volts dropped across this inductor. And we also know that VL is equal to VC. So VC, the voltage drop is also 3,927.5 volts. So from a 100 volt supply, you've got almost 4,000 volts dropped across the inductor and the capacitor. So if your capacitor is not rated for 4,000 volts, that's blowing up. Here's an interesting thing that I'll, I'm going to leave for you to do, right? So 
I want you to try try cal uh, you shouldn't you shouldn't need to try it should be super easy to do but calculate what the current would be and then what the voltage drop would be if instead of having a four ohm resistor we had a one ohm resistor if we had a one ohm resistor what would the voltage drop be across the inductor and the capacitor and then remember that we're just talking about a hundred volt supply you do it with a one ohm resistor it's huge all right that's it for me guys thanks for watching i'll see you next one peace